I hear gay rodeo and I'm like, please, how gay can it be? Oh, it's gay. <laughs> You competing today? Yeah. Are you nervous? I oh, know. I don't get nervous. I'm excited to see you compete. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, if you've been doing it long enough, you know, you know, it, it's what you do, so you don't get too nervous right now. I'm so excited. I've, I've never been anywhere in this sort of environment, so I'm so curious oh, to see and learn. And good. So it is your first rodeo. It's yeah, <laughs> exactly my first rodeo. <laughs> goes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hi, Brian. It's Matt Cullen. I, I'm actually here. Okay, I'm on my way. Okay, cool. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. As I waited for Brian, who was the one that granted me access into the rodeo, I took a seat and watched everyone set up for the day. You know, I didn't know what to expect, but it was definitely a bigger event than I had anticipated for sure. So what's your name? Oh, my name is Bonefish. Bonefish. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm Matt. Hi, Matt. How are you? Welcome to the rodeo. What is your job here? I'm a volunteer. I'm part of the uh, planning committee. I'm also the rodeo clown. That's, that's what this look is for. Right, yeah. I'm going to do a couple of fun things throughout the day. But most of all, I'm going to be working in the shoot area, uh, organizing livestock in and out. Wow, how is that? That's scary. Those, those are big, big animals, really big animals. Could you get hurt because they could kick you or something, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. They can hurt you. you got to be careful. you got to know what you're doing. Hey, how are you? Yeah, are you Brian? Oh, Matt, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. No, no, I'll go over there in one sec. I mean, can I finish this and then I'll go over there? Okay. Oh, I love this one. Into it. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> it's a sharp look. Yes, I'm so into because it. Because of the square, it just reminds me more of uh, Clint Eastwood. I'm into it, yes. It's <laughs> suave, yeah. And the rocket's red glare. The bombs bursting in air Keep proof through the night That our flag was still there What's your name? My name's Anthony, but everybody knows me as Chicken Nugget on the rodeo circuit. Oh, I heard them saying Chicken Nugget. That's me. How do you think of that name? I live in Dallas currently, and back in the early days, apparently that's what they called young boys at the bar were little Chicken Nugget. My now husband and a, a group of his friends, we were at a bar one night, and they were all talking, and I was off to the side by myself, and all of a sudden I heard Chicken Nugget really loud, and my head like cocked sideways, and... It's been that nickname ever since. Most people on the rodeo circuit don't even know my n real name is Anthony. It's just Chicken Nugget yeah. to them. Yeah. I like it oddly fits you. I love it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate so it. So how long have you been doing the rodeo for? Uh, this will be my seventh year competing. How do you like come into this? How do you find this as like a passion of yours? So I um, volunteered a out at a local bar in Fort Worth um, and they were having a drag show for the rodeo in Texas and I started volunteering and then decided I wanted to compete, and that's when I met my now husband and started competing. Before you found out about the gay rodeo, you would just compete in normal rodeos, right? Yeah. How is that? Because, you know, I've never been to a rodeo before, but I'd always think it'd be a very, except for this one, of course, a very straight, more conservative situation. Am I wrong? It uh, definitely is like that. So I grew up around rodeo in high school, and... That it was very rough to be a gay person stepping foot into a rodeo, let alone competing in it. So when I say I compete in other rodeos, it's not, I mean barrel races and stuff like that. It's not the, all the bull riders and that anti-gay Semitic that everybody knows of when they hear straight rodeos nowadays. And it also like goes back to my childhood as well, because when I first came out, it was not taken very lightly with my parents especially. Where did you grow up? I grew up in a very small town uh, about an hour northwest of Fort Worth. The small towns are more conservative I'm assuming? Extremely. Very religious, very set in their ways and it was rough. How old were you when you came out? I was a freshman in high school and I wasn't really, I didn't have the chance to come out myself. I was outed by a family friend that found out but I dealt with the bullying, got jumped multiple times. Um, up until my senior year and then my senior year I kind of started fighting back and holding my ground and thankfully as soon as I graduated I got out of there. How did your parents handle you coming out? My mom really didn't care like she she's like you're my son I love you my dad was 
very anti-gay and verbally abusive when it came to me being who I was at that point. Um, it didn't didn't change until we watched a movie called Prayers for Bobby, and that movie completely changed my dad's mindset on it. Accept me as I am, or forget it. I won't have a gay son. And mom, you don't have a son. And ever since then, they've gone and marched in pride parades with us. Um, they're at almost every rodeo volunteering, the gay rodeos, of course, and they're they're so supportive nowadays, and I'm so thankful for it. Are they here right now? Unfortunately, they're not here. Uh, yeah, I wish they were. The, the um, further rodeos away from us, it's kind of harder for them to get out, um, but they're definitely at almost all the other local, like, really close ones to Texas. I love hearing that like a movie changed a perspective because it really is a testament to like how media can help change a perspective of people and that's kind of what I'm trying to do with my own series is like you know introduce people to different ways of life and showing people that like we are normal human beings that want the same thing that everybody else wants you know. Yeah it, it, it the crazy part about the whole movie thing was my grandmother my mom's mom who was the last person I wanted to know about me being gay she was the one that told my mom about the movie and told my mom she needed to make my dad sit down and watch the movie so I was it, it was so crazy to hear my grand that grandmother the one that I did not want to know say that so I've been very blessed to have almost all my family super supportive right there is supposed to be here too all right Stand right over here okay stay out of the way okay okay I'm filming a documentary okay. you can come in here uh, sure thank you Oh my god, this is fun. So, is it? Okay. So, for this event. About right in here, if you want, because they're going to be calf rope right here, and you'll get more of an angle here, and you Love can follow them down. Thank you so much. Oh my god. I'm out here. I grew up in boarding schools, but I'll tell you a little story. I was studying to be a priest. A priest? I was, and I was like, you know, I think I like boys better than I like girls, and I definitely don't want to give it up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Wait, so, okay, we can talk about stuff off camera because I don't want you to sound uncomfortable. Oh, but no, my... I'm not uncomfortable with anything. Okay, because I know this is like an a, a LGBTQIA rodeo. It can is. we talk about your queerness at all? Do you mind? Yeah, would love it. I am... If you know who Blair White is. She's, a, she's been on my show. Okay. I lean a lot the way she does. I am trans. I've had body work done. With me, when people ask and we really get down to the nitty gritty of it, technically, I guess I'm an enhanced man, you know, with all the implants and the silicone. Do you think that? I do. I don't know how a female feels. I'm never going to know how a female feels. I know my experience. Technically, if I have sex with a, a male, it's going to be homosexual sex because of the parts. If I have sex with a female, that's gonna be heterosexual sex because of the parts. So you think if a guy was have sex with you that you would consider them gay? Most of the guys that are attracted to me, most of the part, most of them are more bisexual because they may not want something that necessarily looks like a man, but they a lot of times want the male parts. That's bisexual. I'm the type that, I don't get upset if you call me he, I don't care. There's no such thing as passable anymore, only presentable. I started transitioning back in the 80s, and I told my brother, he's like, I don't know what to think about all of this. And I said, whatever you're comfortable with, it's not gonna change the fact that we're siblings. I go, but I guarantee you, when I get to a certain point and you call me he, I'm gonna slap your ass and go, come on, big boy. I go, you're gonna get embarrassed. I dealt with it with humor. I was gonna ask about you, you know, growing up. So you said you, you transitioned in the 80s. I did. What was that like compared to what it's like now for trans people and, you know, dealing with society? Back in the 80s, um, we, if you were trans, meaning with body work and you lived this way, if they knew what they were when they hired you, they, they would fire you right away. If they didn't know what you were, they would hire you until they found out. We each have our own difficulties, each generation. Every generation wants to leave a mark. And some generations forget that they're young and they wanna leave their mark. And you know what, we need to be a little more accepting. And some things that just, and I'm just gonna be honest, and this will get me a lot of hate. I don't understand non-binary. 
I'm not going to disrespect someone to their face or anything. I don't understand that. I think it's make up your mind. I just don't think there can be a non-binary trend. Because if you look at what it means, trend in Latin means to cross over or to cross. Okay, so, and I totally respect your opinions and your belief, and I'm, I'm not here to have a debate because honestly, I love, I love hearing your opinion. But my question for you is, is your confusion of non-binary and almost your non-acceptance of it the same as people not accepting you for who you are? Okay, no, I don't look at it that way. Um, I'm trying to... And, I and I'm, just, I'm, no, no. I'm just having a conversation. No, no, I understand that. Um, a non-binary is like you don't really have an identity. Well, their identity is that they're everything and, you know, they're man and they're... One thing you learn in life, and I've learned this with age, you can't be everything. You can't. It's going to drain you. And most of the non-binary people I've seen, I just look at them, some of them as just being lazy um, or too scared to really make that leap and getting the electrolysis and laser and all of that. I've never put down anyone, not on purpose, I don't want to. My opinion, that's what I'm saying. I'm still going to like the person. I'm still going to respect them. If they want me to call them whatever, I'm going to do that. I'm really confused on the they and them. I don't like that. I'll just say, what's your name? So that's just my outlook. And I hope I can help someone. I don't want to come across and I probably have kind of mean or bitter or anything. I'm not, I'm really not like that. It's always fascinating to talk with people because times have changed so much recently and it's, it's change is scary and change is a lot to adjust to. I think a lot of things with us older people and I, all male, female, trans, all of it, I think they feel they don't know where they belong anymore to where they used to know and I'm old and I'm trying to change with the times. And I look at y'all, the young kids, and you inspire me. You keep me wanting to go. There's so much good about this generation. I don't like to focus on the bad. True transition, even if you never do anything on the outside, and I want the kids to understand this, real transition starts on the inside, learning. Everyone talks about love. It's more than that. It's about liking yourself. You have to like yourself before you can love yourself. And if you learn to do both of those, you're going to be a much happier person. I knew I recognized you when you were sitting up there. That is amazing. I'm glad you came up and said something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I had to like scroll through my phone to make sure that it was you. I was like, I know that that's him. I know I see that face. You live in Vegas right now? I don't. I live in Utah. And you came here for the rodeo? Yep, I come down. Uh, this is my second year in a row, but I have a lot of good friends. Actually, my friend who is uh, emceeing right now, uh, I'm staying at his house. Oh, nice. How'd you even find out about the rodeo? Did you grow up going to a rodeo or? Yeah, well, coming from small town Utah, you go, you go to rodeos. You go to derbies and rodeos and all that stuff, yeah. How was it growing up gay going to these rodeos that were not centered for gay people? Oh, f all those people. I like, I am myself and I do whatever I want and I went and had fun. I came last year and I was like really impressed. I was really impressed at how like inclusive it is and how actually really gay it is. I hear gay rodeo and I'm like, please, how gay can it be? Oh. It's gay. Could I wear a, a Britney shirt at a regular rodeo in small town Utah? Absolutely not. And you should have seen what I was wearing yesterday. Do you ever find cute guys here that you like talk with and connect with? All the time. I'm talking to one right now. I know. I know. Honestly, I've been looking around. I'm like, oh, there's like there's like some eligible young bachelors here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and uh, last year, sure, we, we find some. We find some. Or they find me either way. This is a nice ride. I went to a straight rodeo in September of 19 and uh, just wasn't home, just couldn't be comfortable, couldn't be myself. So that rodeo was over, I went and looked at, uh, googled and IGRA came up and I seen that there was a rodeo coming up in October. So I went and met a lot of people that I, I, I went knowing nobody. Mm -hmm. And I got to know people and saw royalty and I'm like, I want to be them. And now you are. <laughs> if you're going to live this way, you gotta be really thick skinned. And that's the thing with the rodeo. They've really accepted me. 
They've really accepted me. They don't care. Bumps and all. They don't care. They just care about you as a person. And that's what I love about them. It's like a big family. I, I felt like I was welcome with open arms and it's been such a fun ride since. It was over 100 degrees. My cameras were overheating and it was time to call it a day for me. But my time at the Gay Rodeo was a day that I just knew I would never forget. Being in these new environments, meeting people that I may never have met otherwise, has been one of the greatest gifts this series has given me. Because with every interview I do, and every person that trusts me to share their story with me, I, I grow so much as a human being. I, I feel so grateful and it's it's because of all of you who watch and support that these opportunities and these doors have been opened. Thank you so, so much. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you next week.